Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director for the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. We are a local nonprofit serving children and families from birth to age five. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be prepared for kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level by the third grade. With me today here in the studio, we have two special guests, Shannon Maitland, who's the Community Engagement Manager for the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, and Susan Roberts, Early Literacy Coach for Child Care Resources and also Lead Consultant for Family Engagement at KRC. Ladies, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks Thank for, you having, for me. having us. Susan, I'll start with you. Could you tell us a little bit about your role at Child Care Resources and at KRC? Sure. Thank you, Nivia. Um, at Child Care Resources, I work as a coach in daycare centers and family care centers. I go to the centers and help the directors and teachers with whatever they need assistance with. If it's classroom management, curriculum, if they need some help with behaviors for children or even community resources. Uh, so I'm there to support all of our child care providers uh, in the county. And Child Care Resources also provides some professional development for early um, childhood care providers and their teachers uh, throughout the year. And that's really important um, without having a major university in the area to provide some professional development for those teachers also. Susan, that's certainly very important that our early care providers are getting the support and the technical assistance that they need from someone like you. Shannon, you. talk to us a little bit about your role at KRC as Community Engagement Manager. What does that mean? I get to work on lots of exciting projects with a wonderful team of caring individuals, and we're all focused on helping children and their families succeed. Um, so we do two major events. We have the Pre-K Party and Kindergarten Roundup in February, and we also have the Touch a Truck Family Festival coming up in October. Um, in addition to that, we host some events for partners, including summits and lunch and learns, where we all work together and find ways to um, be as efficient and effective as possible in, in working as a team. Um, we also have two outreach and parent engagement specialists that I get to work closely with, and they help support families in any way that they need. So Shannon, mm -hmm. it sounds like you spend a lot of time really supporting the families and the community in Indian River County. Most definitely. Um, I also get to do some of the behind the scenes paperwork and number crunching and go to meetings, but we do, we're focused on children and families. So it's very, very exciting. Susan, talk to us a little bit about early childhood education. Why should this be important for the community to hear and understand? Well, as an early childhood educator, I have always, my heart has always been with the younger children. Um, that's what I got my degree in, birth through actually third grade. And um, now there's so much research that tells us that what children are exposed to at a young age will have an effect on them throughout their life. So we know that uh, even an infant needs to have engagement with the adults, to have a good relationship with the adult, to be hearing the language so that they are understanding. And that's all the beginning of the literacy skills that they're going to use later in school. When they're hearing sounds, that when their parents are speaking to them, those sounds are going to translate into hearing beginning sounds of words, putting sounds together to make words, and then putting those words together to make sentences, and then they're reading. So getting those children at a very young age to be engaged in their environment around them uh, is so important. That's how children learn. They learn through play. And uh, when we do a little bit more focused play, they really can get so much more out of everyday activities. Susan, it really sounds like those early years are foundational years where we really mm -hmm. need to capitalize on that time that we spend with 
babies and little ones. Definitely. It's so important. And I know a lot of times, you know, we like to look at babies and coo at babies and we don't think they're really getting a lot, um, but they are. They're taking in everything. Um, and it's not just the things that they're hearing. It's also even the emotional exchanges with children. You know, the fact that they love to be comforted and cuddled and they know by doing that that they're secure and that they're loved. And that's going to build their confidence for later on also. So all of those interactions are, are really important. And so what I think is uh, important for parents to know is that by just maybe tweaking a couple of things that they're doing, they can help their children in so many ways. They're not buying anything extra. They're not doing anything extra. They're just interacting with their children. Susan, you mentioned something that's really critical. I think we spend a lot of time talking on those skills that youngsters need for kindergarten, but you talked on that social emotional piece why is that so important for children to be ready for kindergarten and to be ready for success? Well, when we start drilling children and doing flashcards at too young of an age, um, education is no longer a lot of fun for children. Children learn naturally through play and through um, interacting with others. One of the things that I hear a lot from kindergarten teachers is, I just wish children would know how to sit and listen to a story, mm. that they can follow one and two step directions. Because if they're ready, then the kindergarten teachers, the VPK teachers, the daycare teachers can teach them the things that they need to know because they're ready. So at home and in the younger years, by kind of enhancing their environment, talking about their environment, giving them support, those children are going to be ready to learn. They'll be able to focus, be able to sit and listen to the teacher when the teacher presents a themed unit and they're studying about animals. If a child's not ready to sit and listen and is not used to asking questions, is not engaged, it's really hard for them to get the most out of the lessons. So all of those pre-kindergarten skills are really important. Uh, Susan, that's really great insight for all of us. Shannon, do you find these observations as well when you're dealing with parents and, and children in terms of that social emotional need or just kindergarten readiness in general? Most definitely. Um, Susan mentioned the word foundation, and I always think of it like the foundation of a house. If it's built well and constructed well, that's going to help the longevity of the house. It's very similar with children. Those, those neuron pathways, those little bridges in their brain are being built each time they have an interaction with a loving and caring adult or when they're playing with, with other children. So it's very important. Um, and in addition to what our hearts tell us, the research also backs it up that early childhood is one of the areas with the highest return um, on investment. And there are also statistics that show if a child shows up ready for school and they're reading by third grade, that child's a lot more likely to succeed. Now, the alternative is a little bit more alarming. If the children aren't ready, then they're much more likely to commit crimes, to become arrested, to be teen parents, to try drugs. There are lots of scary risk factors that we'd all like our own children to avoid and the youngest citizens in our community and, and future taxpayers as well. So it's a much bigger issue um, than just, you know, some people just think about playing on the floor and playing blocks, but there's a lot more to it. Certainly, there's there's a wide range of issues that we mm -hmm. need to cover and discuss in terms of early childhood education and our understanding mm -hmm. of the impact in terms of school readiness. Susan, let's talk now about some practical tips. Parents often wonder, I'm, I'm at home, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of resources, I might not have a lot of money. What can I do to help my little one be successful for school? I'd be happy to share some tips. <laughs> um, one of the things that I um, do with parents is we always have magazines. I brought a lot of magazines to parent classes. And as I was flipping through this magazine uh, today in preparation for coming here, I found this picture. And I'm always talking to parents that you can talk to your children about any picture, about in any book. It doesn't have to be a board book or a book on their level. When we look at this picture, we see the two children and they're playing on the ground together. You can talk with the children. What do you see in the background of this picture? Mm -hmm. We see a play structure. Where might you see that? Maybe at the park. Maybe at school. 
these two boys look like they're wrestling on the ground. Do they look happy? Well, when we look at them right now, they're laughing. What's going to happen if they get too rough? Well, then they might not be happy anymore. They might, somebody might end up crying. So you can make a whole story out of a picture like this. Uh, one picture, and I, I thought it was funny that this magazine had this same picture in it because I love this picture. Um, little girl with her dog. She's playing the harmonica, and the dog looks like it's howling. This is great. You can have a big, long story about this particular picture with the child. You can talk about what sound do you think that that dog is making and let your child make the sound. Do you think that he likes the music that the little girl is making? Do you think that she's playing a special song for the dog? So you, by just having a magazine, you can do a lot of very good activities that will help encourage language. Also, this is something that I made today, and we've done this in our parent classes before. Uh, we've ma actually made a book about this, but I just did it in this format, Maria Likes. And I would let a child just go through a magazine, tear out the pictures, cut out the pictures with one of those blunt nose scissors, So because you have to be safe. doesn't matter if they cut out on the lines, not at all. They're practicing cutting skills. And just let them put pictures here that they might like. Later on, if you brought this out, let's see, Maria's name starts with the sound. Mm, is there anything else that starts with this sound? Let's say the names of the pictures. We have a kitten. We have Minnie Mouse. Does that say start with the same sound? We also have some M&Ms on this picture. So by doing this, first you're talking about the pictures and things that Maria likes. Maria can see her name. And Maria is also learning about some beginning sounds. When she gets older, you could even write out the full words under the picture so that she can then relate the word to the object. So very simple activities. It doesn't take very much. Um, I come from the age where instead of a glue stick, we used flour and water for paste. <laughs> so that was a bit long ago. Um, but that's also something you don't need a lot of materials in order to provide some really uh, fun activities and good learning activities for your children. Susan, those are really some good practical tips. Thank you for sharing that with our audience. We're going to take a break and we will be right back with Moonshot Radio. At the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, our vision is for every parent, regardless of income or zip code, to have the knowledge and tools they need to raise healthy children that are prepared for kindergarten. Our mission is to support our partners in developing a high-quality early childhood system that is family-centered. Our outreach and parent engagement specialists connect with families and build trusted relationships. KRC has chosen Felsmere and Gifford as our two focus areas in Indian River County. Our Felsmere office is located downtown in the city annex, and our new Gifford office is located within Victory Park Apartments. Our administrative offices are now located adjacent to Healthy Start and Treasure Coast Community Health in Vero Beach. The Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, developing a high-quality early childhood system for all children in Indian River County. Hurry, Joey. I want to get there early to get the best stuff. But we have to go to another garage sale. You do know there's a better way. You can get phenomenal stuff and great deals on almost everything at our Habitat Restore. Hey, isn't that where you got your office desk? Find great stuff at the renovated and expanded Indian River Habitat Restore on US 1, just north of 45th Street. Open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6. Donations of gently used stuff is always appreciated. Shop, donate, volunteer. Habitat Restore is a nonprofit. Hi, this is Leah Waldos. We are proud to present the fourth annual Barefoot Beach Ball. Just come to Waldos Sunday of Labor Day weekend, September 2nd, in your wackiest attire at 6 p.m. Then we'll take all the plunge at sunset while the band plays on. Guests will enjoy hors d'oeuvres, a free cocktail, and lots of prizes to bid for. Special thanks to sponsors Malibu Rum, Gerard Equipment, Metz, Nuttall, Elwell, and Graham CPAs, the Peter Bush Family Foundation. For more than 160 years, PNC has been committed to providing their clients with great service and powerful financial expertise to help them meet their financial goals. 
The PNC Foundation, which receives its principal funding from the PNC Financial Services Group, actively supports organizations that provide services for the benefit of communities in which it has significant presence. The Foundation focuses its philanthropic mission on early childhood education and community and economic development, which includes arts and culture. Through Grow Up Great, its signature cause that began in 2004, PNC has created a bilingual 350 million multi-year initiative to help prepare children from birth to age five for success in school and life. For more information, go to pncgrowupgreat.com. We're back to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative. And joining me today in the studio are Shannon Maitland, Community Engagement Manager for KRC, and Susan Roberts, Early Literacy Coach at Child Care Resources. Right before the break, Susan, we were hearing from you on some practical mm -hmm. tips for parents. I want to turn over to you now, Shannon, and ask you, we often hear about developmental milestones. What exactly does this mean, and do you have any resources that we can share with parents? Sure, that's a great question. Um, developmental milestones are those indicators of child development. They're targets that we want kids to be at at a certain age range. So similar when you take your child to the pediatrician and they give you the chart on the height and the weight. It's similar to that, but more about their brains and their bodies and their skills. Um, so I brought some tools today that we have in our outreach toolkit. One of them is a milestone chart from um, Help Me Grow, and it breaks down into um, six six month groups and it talks about the gross motor skills the fine motor skills the cognitive skills and those social emotional skills that susan mentioned um, and i think it's important to note that there's a range because each child's different they grow differently they develop differently and so these are just kind of targets and goals to work towards and if a child isn't hitting the the goal by the end of the age range then it's probably time to talk to the pediatrician or maybe get a learning checkup we also have this really great wheel that I know Susan uses all the time, and it goes by the age range and gives um, just different little tips and little little tricks um, for the different groups and the different milestone areas. So we really like these, and they're in English and in Spanish. And then um, my children, this is their favorite one. This is a growth chart, and so... Um, I love that it has the caterpillar to butterfly analogy, and then it also has some little indicators here of, you know, where the kiddo should be at that age range. So these are some of our materials, and we also really like Vroom, which is an app, um, and they also have these really cool tips where, you know, you can have every moment be a brain-building moment. My favorite tip that I've learned here is having your children help with laundry, especially socks, right? So sorting the socks, <laughs> sorting by color, um, even helping with dishes and just talking about the different things going on. So these are some of our room tip cards that we give out to families. Um, and we have a couple other room things that I brought. So this has the Vroom app, and you can go on the Daily Vroom website. It's real simple, and you can get little tips for each day um, to do with your kiddo that are age-appropriate. And then they gave us this really nice poster here that gives you just a couple basic things to remember. So look, follow, chat, take turns, and stretch out that conversation. So these are a couple things in our outreach toolkit. Certainly a lot of helpful information for parents, what they can do at home mm -hmm. with practical things like magazines or refer to the resources and the charts and the app that Shannon just mentioned. Let's talk a little bit in the time that we have left about literacy in general. And Shannon, I know that uh, the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative has a one book, one read initiative. Talk mm -hmm. to us briefly about that and how folks can get more information about accessing this resource. Sure. We know that um, getting books into the hands of children is one of the most important things we can do. Books are kind of like fuel for their brain. So we were lucky enough through the first book, National Book Bank, to get this wonderful book, Little Poems for Tiny Ears. It's got lots of great little rhymes and different pictures. 
Um, we managed to get over 7,000 copies of this book for free, including free shipping. And we're working with lots of community partners, preschools, faith-based groups, um, parents, all sorts of wonderful people. Susan's given out a lot. Um, and in addition to the book, we have this adorable bilingual bookmark that gives tips and tricks for reading with your kids. Um, our biggest order so far has been from Treasure Coast Community Health. They just took 2,000 books wow. to give to their littlest patients. Um, so we're working very hard to get these out into the community. So if you want some or if you know anyone who wants them, you could go to our website and register. It's under One Book, One Read. You can go to any of our offices in Felsmere, Gifford, or administrative office here in Vero, um, or you can visit our KRC table at community events. Thank you, Shannon. And Susan, for parents who want to support with their little ones with that particular book, Little Poems for Tiny mm -hmm. Ears, or any book in general, any final tips that you can share with them? Okay, well, I just happen to bring one of my favorite books that I read to my children, and it's called Good Night Moon, and it's by Margaret Weiss Brown. We used this last night with a parent group. We had infants through um, probably seven-year-olds in our group, and you can use this with all ages. And when you're reading the book, you're it talks about some of the items in the pictures. This is a great green room. There's a telephone, a red balloon, but there's also a lot of other things in the pictures that aren't named in the uh, words of the book. So I would encourage parents to extend what they're doing with the book as much as possible. I see some things that you can wear in this picture. What are those things? What are things that you can put on your hands when your hands are cold? I see some animals in this in this picture also, and extend that learning. When I was reading this book uh, to a two-year-old, when we got about halfway through, she started getting a little bit antsy. So at that point, if your child isn't really interested that much in the story anymore, I started making up my own story to make it a little bit more interesting for the child. So you don't have to be limited to the words on the page. You can make up your own story with a book. And this may become your child's favorite book that they want to hear every night before they go to bed. Uh, that's certainly a lot of useful, practical tips for parents, especially now that we're going back to school. How can we support our little ones? How can we encourage literacy again shannon if folks are interested in the one book one read initiative they should visit the krc website that's correct and these books are absolutely free absolutely free um you just need to come pick them up because we have a very small team so unfortunately we can't <laughs> deliver them to everybody but we do we have seven thousand copies um that we'd like to give to all the children ages birth through five in indian river county and if folks are a child care provider, um, a center, they can also get multiple copies of this book. Most definitely. Definitely. So, folks, if you're interested in receiving more information about the One Book, One Read initiative, please visit the KRC website. Susan, Shannon, I want to thank you. A lot of good information. I'm going to have to bring you back because there were a lot of <laughs> tips, a lot of information, and I know that we didn't get through all of them, but thank you so much for taking the time, again, particularly at this time of the year when we're starting up in school mm -hmm. and folks are looking to help their little ones. We want everyone to be successful in school. That's really our vision. That's our goal. So thank you again for joining me. And to our audience, this has been Moonshot Radio. Until next time, thank you for joining us. <laughs>